addition to our regular discussion with Michael Tuesday morning on his show, we also sat down with Michael Tuesday afternoon as he sat in as guest host on the Dave Steeran Show uh, to discuss uh, the weekly top three there. Due to time constraints, the discussion of the top three is more abbreviated in, on the Steeran Show than it was on Michael's morning show. But Michael also carved out time to add a fourth issue in the afternoon during the steering discussion that we didn't cover in the morning show. That fourth issue revolves around an article that appeared Tuesday morning on the Alaska Public Radio News uh, website uh, by Andrew Kitcheman that, that basically asked the question uh, of gu gubernatorial candidates, can Alaska afford the PFD? And if so, how would you pay for it? Michael asked me for my thoughts on that same issue. Um, and we had that discussion at the end uh, of my Steering Show segment. So let's join Michael sitting in for Dave Steering Tuesday afternoon. The Dave Steering Show continues now only on FM News 1037 KFQD. Michael Dukes filling in for Dave Steering here on the Dave Steering Show. Appreciate you coming in and uh, joining us today and taking us with you on the way home. Uh, I bring in a guest on right now, somebody who appears regularly on my show because uh, I, I'm one of those sick and twisted people that I like to get down into the weeds, the details, the numbers. I like to crunch that stuff. Uh, and when it comes to state business, uh, one of the sharpest people I know is Brad Keithley. He's a former oil and gas consultant uh, and uh, an attorney. He uh, has since retired, but he started an organization called Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. And every week I discuss uh, just that with him, the state, the fiscal outlook, what's happening with oil and gas, and, of course, stuff going on in the legislature as well. Brad joins us right now. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Michael. How are you? Uh, how are you this afternoon? I'm doing this good. We talked this morning and now uh, this afternoon. I think we should just keep talking the whole time. It'll be fun stuff. Um, so let's uh, let's let's crank things off. You've got your weekly top three. We don't have a lot of time here, uh, unfortunately, but let's let's crank down into your weekly top three, uh, which you can find over there at his uh, Facebook page for uh, again Alaskans for a sustainable budget. Brad, where do we start? Well, let's start. Let's start with the primary day, uh, and frankly, I'm I'm sort of now looking through the primary and where all of this process has left us going into uh, into the general election going forward. There is some evolution going on in people's positions that I think is going to be interesting once we get through the primary uh, and get into the into the general election. Mark Begich, for example, started out last uh, last winter when he started commenting on state matters and talked about a 50-50 PFD that looked like it was consistent with the current statute and with uh, Governor Hammond's original vision. But as we start getting toward the general election, uh, that position's evolved. If you look on his website, uh, he's now talking about 50-50 still, but 50-50 of a POMB, a percent of market value approach, uh, and using a 5% return, which is a fairly low return, less than the historical average for uh, that the that the permanent fund corporation has achieved so there's there's an evolution in in uh, in uh, in baggage's approach mike dunleavy uh, uh interestingly enough is evolving as well uh as we've gotten into the final stages of this campaign uh dunleavy is now talking about uh a budget of roughly 4.2 billion dollars going forward an operating budget right of 4.2 billion dollars before you get to the capital budget and talking about growing that budget that's that's starkly different frankly from where dunleavy was just a couple of months ago when he was talking about cutting the operating budget significantly and and talking about maintaining a budget of that size going forward has some significant implications frankly that he's not He's not addressed. So I think as, as Dunleavy's still the better candidate today in my book and, and still uh, centralizes on the PFD, which I think is important. Uh, but there's some evolution going on in that position. And I think we're going to sort of wake up tomorrow as, as we find, uh, as we see the winners and see, the, see, uh, see who was successful in these campaigns. And, and we're going to need to start reassessing uh, exactly where this general campaign is going to go, because it seems to be 
trending off in a somewhat different way. Well, and we've seen this before where campaigns have slightly morphed. I mean, Mead Treadwell, when he first jumped into the race, was you know kind of ambivalent about the PFD. He was open to just using it for government. That slowly morphed, I think, as he got out onto the campaign trail and started knocking on doors and realizing people were, you know, the two things that they were upset about was crime and the taking of the PFD. So there is always kind of a morphing of it. Um, I'm in agreement with you that I think uh, I think Dunleavy is the is the best choice right now. Um, but uh, it you know it, it's up to people to decide. We got to get in, and now we've got to look beyond the primaries to where do we go from here. So that's definitely a uh, that's definitely an important uh, uh, an important delineation here as people go out to make those decisions. Um, for, for 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 people that haven't voted yet, I think you know looking at Canada's position on the PFD is is the key thing that helps you that that identifies for you whether the candidate is focused on the private sector the pfd cutting the pfd has the largest adverse impact on the overall economy uh, is by far the costliest to alaska families so if you have a candidate who has either voted for or cut the pfd what he's telling you with that vote is that he considers government more important than the private economy yeah um and so i i, I would focus on that as a central issue if you haven't if you haven't decided yet. Absolutely. It'd be one of the big things. Let's talk a little bit about one of the other big things in Alaska. This is your number two. We need to talk a little bit about oil taxation. With the price of oil rebounding across the globe, um, there there's going to be a clarion call. And, you know, after the after this primary, that'll be one of the topics, I'm sure, that these candidates will try and differentiate themselves on, and that will be oil taxes. Yeah, we've seen we've seen that begin over in over in Great Britain. There's an article that I've got. Uh, on the Alaskan for Sustainable Budgets uh, Facebook page uh, that is from yesterday, from the Financial Times yesterday, that starts talking about that's talking about uh, England or the UK needing to reassess uh, oil taxes now that oil prices have recovered. The UK cut them significantly during the downturn uh, in order to uh, in, 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 try to encourage continued investment through the downturn. It worked a little bit. But now that we're having recovery in, or now that they're having recovery in prices and in production, there's, they're, they're beginning to look at whether or not they re, need to reassess those taxes. We have, we're going to have the same thing start this fall uh, in, in various campaigns. I suspect that Mark Begich is going to be out there talking about the need to, to relook at oil taxes. And there is some basis for relooking at oil taxes in Alaska. The, the, when we when we based oil taxes in, uh, and when we changed oil taxes in 2014, the federal corporate income, the federal corporate income tax rate was above 30 percent, um, and that that sort of defined the federal share. Governor Hammond, uh, when he talked about oil taxes, would talk about a third for the uh, or oil issues, a third for the federal government, a third for the state government, uh, and a third for the companies. Well, the, the the change in federal income taxes it, it, it has reduced significantly the, the federal take from above 30 percent now down to the low 20 percent as a result of the as, as a result of tax reform last December, and that really changes the calculation. Uh, that amount that that money that previously was going to the federal government is now right. going to the companies. Some of that flows through to to the state, but but I think it gives a basis for for reevaluating uh, state uh, state taxes. The one thing that we've got to be focused on as we go through this process, though, is ensuring that we don't repeat the ACES mistake of 2007 and, and, and set taxes so high that we become uncompetitive in attracting new investment. We need to remain focused on staying uh, uh, competitive for investment. But, that's, but that, that's an issue, I think, that's going to develop during the fall as well. And we're going to hear, we're going to need to hear candidates talk more about it. Well, I think that satisfies the argument. There's been an argument that we've left money on the table, especially at these higher prices, which I agree with in part. Um, but uh, again, you don't want to swing. The problem in Alaska is we've always swung one, you know, one way or the other, elf and then aces and then back and forth. It's just, you know, it's it's been a, a roller coaster ride. We need to be a little more frugal in how we do that. But I agree that there's a little more room on the table for that expansion. I'd like to see more of that. Um, your third uh, topic is, uh, uh, it, and I, I know I'm kind of jumping the gun here a little bit early, but we're going to come up to break. The third topic is uh, is the federal debt, and I do want to touch about that, but I kind of want to sneak in a fourth topic. Uh, you and I were kind of sharing things earlier, talking about this uh, AK Public uh, article about supporters of the full PFD aren't clear how they'd pay for it. And so I want you to give some thought to that because we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, uh, we'll hit on item number three. And now the new addendum, item number four, with Brad Keithley. You okay with that, Brad? Absolutely. 
Absolutely. Okay, we're going to take a quick break then. We're going to be back with more. You're listening to Michael Dukes right here on the Dave Steering Show. The Dave Steering Show continues now, only on FM News 1037 KFQD. The Dave Steering Show, Michael Dukes filling in for Dave while he's on vacay. Joining me right now on the phone is Brad Keithley, who is with Alaskans for a Sustainable Budget. We normally do on my show his weekly top three. Today I've expanded it for him on uh, this Dave Steering Show because Dave Steering's got a much larger show than I do, so we made it the top four. Because that's how we roll. Uh, so we're going to move on to number three, which, of course, has to do with national debt before we crash back into Alaska on the PFD. Brad? Michael, uh, there's been a lot of talk in D.C. about about starting a process uh, and passing a bill, perhaps this, even this fall, called Tax Reform 2.0. It would, it would build on uh, the tax reform that was done uh, last year. The intent would be to build on the tax reform that was done last year and do some additional cuts. The problem with that, as, as, as we start looking at that, the problem with that is the numbers are starting to come in from the tax cut we did last year. And, and instead of the anticipation, I think, by some that, that revenues would increase uh, as a result of, of reduced taxes, reduced taxes generate additional business, generate additional revenue, the numbers that are coming in are showing that, that taxes are decreasing. Uh, and, and the consequence of that is opening up the debt. Corporate income taxes are down substantially uh, from where they were last year. Individual income taxes are at best holding even, and if you, once you adjust for uh, the 2017 tax year, may in fact be down also. So before we rush off and do something else, we need to really understand what we've done to ourselves. National debt is, is now in excess of $20 trillion. Yes, Obama was responsible for part of that, but frankly, the debt is growing again. Right. Debt this year, uh, since Trump, uh, since President Trump was elected, has risen over what it was during the last four Obama years. It's now projected to rise even more to exceed uh, a trillion dollars. So we need to we need to sort of stop, take a pause, focus on what we're doing, and and people in Alaska need to be talking to their senators and their representative. And, and be concerned about the national debt. This is right. something that will have trickle down effects on all of us going forward, uh, and it's and it's a big issue that's, uh, that's that's moving up on the radar. It's one of the things that I said to you this morning was it's great that we got a tax cut. The problem is is that we didn't get a spending cut to go with it. So if you take in less revenue through the tax cut and then you expand the uh, the spending, guess what happens? Your deficit goes up, and our and all three of our national constituents, both senators and Congressman Young, uh, voted for the budget, this big budget, and we've just never seen a dollar that we don't want to. Spend in this country, so I agree with you. It is a crisis. Uh, Thomas Massey, Representative Thomas Massey, said that some estimates show that it would be a trillion dollar a year increase on the deficit for the next ten years. That's insane. I mean, that's crazy stuff right there. It is, and and that has. I mean, the knock on effect on Alaska is huge. It raises interest costs, which will affect mortgages, affect car loans. Uh, affect all sorts of uh, credit card costs. It'll affect all sorts of costs that we incur in Alaska. And the other thing is interest costs on the national debt are now projected, given the direction we're going, are projected to themselves, just interest costs alone, to be higher than a than, than trillion dollars uh, in the next few years, to exceed a trillion dollars a year in the next few years. That's out of a budget of about four trillion, four and a half trillion. Uh, so that's a huge part of the budget that would be going to interest. The effect of that would be to reduce spending, reduce the amount remaining for spending on a lot of other things, one of them being national defense. Right. And Alaska, Alaska is, is significantly affected by defense spending. So if we're, see, we're going to see a crowding out uh, of those sorts of, of spending categories that that benefit Alaska by spending it, frankly, on on interest on things that we've already enjoyed in the past. We need to get the budget. We need to get spending down. But as importantly, frankly, we need to take a breath before we plunge off into additional tax cuts uh, until we get spending down before we plunge off into additional tax cuts that would just make that deficit and just make those interest costs even worse. I, I agree. I've tried to shoehorn number four in here. It's an AK public media piece uh, talking about supporters of the full PFD aren't clear about how they'd pay, talking about the four main candidates for governor. you got about two minutes here, Brad. Can you summate for me? Yeah, so the article was uh, was published this morning or last night 
uh, in Alaska in the APRN, Alaska Public Radio Network uh, uh, website. Uh, it's an, art, uh, an article by Andrew Kitcheman that essentially says, that essentially uh, goes at the issue of, of how do we restore PFD cuts. Kitcheman, I think, frankly wrote the headline, which was none of the candidates have a plan for how they would pay for uh, PFD, uh, a restored PFD, um, uh, and then wrote the, wrote the article around that headline. It's, it's got the issue backwards. The PFD is a standalone revenue source. The way the statute works, the permanent fund generates earnings, then under the statute, those earnings are supposed to go, and under Governor Hammond's vision, those earnings are supposed to go 50 percent uh, to the P- to support the PFD and, and direct to Alaska citizens. What's really happened is the legislature's come in and, and diverted that revenue stream, much the same as if your stockbroker came in and said, hey, you know those dividends you were supposed to get? Well, I'm going to transfer them to my account. Uh, the, 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 the revenue's been diverted uh, away from the PFD. The PFD was doing is doing just fine. The permanent fund's doing fine in generating earnings. The permanent fund dividends doing fine uh, in generating revenues that go to Alaskans. Um, and it shouldn't it shouldn't have been touched. It should be restored, and we shouldn't have to pay for it uh, in some fashion. Now, if spending is too high, then we've got to figure out how to pay for that spending. Right. One of the things would be to bring state spending down. But to think we have to do something to pay for the PFD just has the issue backwards. We need to we need to let the PFD be as Governor Hammond originally intended it uh, to be a, a, a direct flow out of the earnings into into the PFD accounts, and not think that we have to do extraordinary things to pay for it. What we've got to pay for is things like spending on three universities, spending three hundred million dollars on optional Medicaid services, um, and and spending on a K through twelve system that's broken. Those are the things we've got to fix and things we've got to find to pay for it, not the PFD. Absolutely. And, of course, they're changing in the accounting of the PFD here the last two years where they, you know, they used to not account for it. It would the flow through. There was no income outflow. But now they started to account that, that dividend income as actual income, and then they'd write it off as expense. Just makes people think yet again that it's a big welfare payment, which, of course, we all know who've done the reading that it's not. Brad Keithley, Alaskans for Sustainable Budget. Thank you, my friend, for coming in. Appreciate you giving me that fourth shot at the apple there at the end. Michael, my my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Back with more. Well, that's a wrap for this week's bonus edition of the weekly top three from Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. Thank you again for joining us. Remember that you can find past episodes on our YouTube and SoundCloud pages. And keep track of us during the week on Facebook and Twitter. This has been Brad Keithley, Managing Director of Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. We look forward to you joining us again next week on the Weekly Top 3.